Sun, can I share my slides? Am Please I audible hold. and visible? Yes, Paritosh. Please go ahead. Okay, fine. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Paritosh. I am doing my junior residency from RPC New Delhi. I would like to thank all the UC and AIUS delegates for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to present my slide on retinal anatomy. Now, further delay. Now, without uh, doing a further delay, I should be continuing my slide. I guess my slides are visible now. Yes, Dr. Paratosh, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Now to begin with the, um, the retina, we would like to see some of the embryological facts about retina. First of all, we have an optic pit in neuroectoderm at date 23rd of gestation. As we know from our basic knowledge, uh, brain has got a, uh, three basic parts from Prosencephalon, mesencephalon, and rhombencephalon. Prosencephalon further divides into telencephalon and a diencephalon. From diencephalon, we get an optic vesicle at day 25th of the gestation, which around day 25th to 35th of gestation transform into an optic cup. The optic cup has an outermost layer, which uh, converts into a future retinal pigment. And the innermost layer will uh, subsequently form into a neurosensory retinal layer. And the optic is stock at around day 25th to 35th of the day will form a scaffold for axon of an optic nerve. Here I would like to mention some clinical relevant point. If at around day 33, the uh, ventral part of the optic cup, which receives hyaluronic artery, if it does not cut, does not closes. It, uh, it forms an anomaly, fundal coloboma, which we frequently encounter in our clinical practices. This slides is not moving. Yeah. Yeah. To begin with, retina, as, as I, I was discussing previously, retina has a uh, two, basically we can divide it into two parts, innermost and the outermost. Innermost is a neurosensory, Neuro, we can further divide it into inter, interneuronal and a projection neuron. Pro, projection neuron is basically a ganglion cell which will convey to the visual cortex. Interneuron, we have an amalgamation of bipolar, amacrine, and a horizontal cell. By sensory, we mean the outer segment, which is actually a photoreceptive parts of rods and cones, and they are rich in idopsin and rhodopsin. An outer layer being RP layer. Now, if we overview the extent of the retina, from posterior we see retina begins from the optic nerve head and it ends anteriorly at the ora serrata. Ora serrata, if we see externally, it receives the insertion of LR and MR. And if we see equator, this dotted white, uh, white line, it externally, uh, for, uh, it, uh, it is a landmark which we can see 4 mm anterior to the exit of a vortex vein. In this diagram, you can see that the posterior most RPE layer and the anterior one neurosensory retinal layer do not stop at the ora serrata. It, it, it continues further lining the ciliary body and making a ciliary body double lined epithelium. Retinal dialysis is basically, basically a separation of neurosensory retinal layer from the non-pigmented epithelium of the ciliary body. Now, this is not a wrong slide. Actually, I have made intentionally to just make it interesting. Dentate process is basically a retinal tissue um, dent, uh, from the uh, at around ora serrata and pars plane are giving it uh, projection posteriorly as a ora bay. These ornamentals are just highlighting and closed ora bay, which is nothing. This, these are just a part of the pars plane, uh, which is enclosed by the retinal tissue. Now I would like to clear some more interesting terms which we often forget in our residency. We have we, we just struggle with all these terms. Meridional fold, fold is a, ret, a prominent retinal thickening in the retina. 
and meridional complex when meridional fold is associated with the enlarged ciliary process. Talking about the gross anatomy of retina, we can grossly divide it into central retina, which is also known as anatomical macula or a area centralis or a posterior pole and the peripheral retina. The outermost the circle which you are seeing in this diagram is basically a macula having a diameter of around 5.5 mm and the innermost lies the ambo where we get the sharpest visual equity. To begin with, ambo has a diameter of 150 to 200 micron, foveola being 0.35 mm, fovea 1.5 mm diameter, surrounding 0.5 mm, you can see this diagram, surrounding 0.5 mm of the area around fovea, we have a parafovea and around it 1.5 mm is a parafovea zone. Peripheral retina we can uh, classify into near periphery, mid periphery, far and the extreme periphery. Uh, actually at fovea, we, uh, this is not an actual thinning. Basically the bipolar cells and the ganglion cell layers, they get aligned in an arcuate fa fashion giving a pseudo appearance at a fovea that the layers have been uh, retinal, there is a retinal defect, but actually there is not a retinal defect. Only three layers mostly we see as a ILM, ELM, cones and a RPA. This at the fovea being a, uh, slightly avascular because it mostly supplies the diffusion from the corio capillaries. Now the petaloid appearance and uh, this uh, petaloid appearance that we see in C, uh, CME is basically the inner cone layers being elongated and curved, which we also know that they are known as a Henle layer. This figure of white flower is just showing sepals. They are looking just like a petals. That's why the term petaloid uh, came in this respect. And this uh, figure A is showing FA images of a petaloid appearance of CME. Blood, if we see the blood supply of macula, we see that the uh, macular part basically receives the blood innervations from the central retinal artery. In 20% of the individual, we also got a ciliary retinal artery. In that case, if a patient suffers a CRAO, that this part which, you, uh, which I am highlighting will be spared in this case. And the patient might present with a uh, slightly better visual uh, equity than what we normally accept in a CRA course. Now, this figure is basically showing the 10 layers of retina, both on a histology section, and they are just a drawing depiction of these all these uh, 10 layers. To begin with, most posteriorly or more externally, we have a RPE layer, then a layer of rods and cones, external limiting membrane, outer nuclear layer, these are basically the nuclei of the rods and cones, outer plexiform layer, these are synaptic, uh, synaptic synapses between the bipolar cells and the rods and cones with the amalgamation of horizontal cells, horizontal cells synapses. Then comes inner nuclear layer, which is a nucleus of bipolar cell and the uh, molar cells. Then in uh, inner plexiform layer, this is the synapses between the ganglion cell layer and the bipolar cell. Then comes the uh, ganglion cell layer, which is the ganglion cell body and its axon making the nerve fiber layer and foot process of uh, molar cells making the internal limiting membrane. This figure shows that outer one third of the retina till outer plexiform layer is supplied by the choroidal diffusion, whereas inner two third of the retina is supplied by the central retinal artery. This OCT image shows um, how the different 10 layers look um, on the OCT images. The highlighted yellow ones are the, basically these are the hyperfluorescent layer that we see on the OCT images. These being inner plexiform, outer plexiform, external limiting, RP, interdigitation zone, and the ellipsoid zones. RP cells, if we see, they, they are basically hexagonal. And center portions are more slender and tall, while the peripher peripheral, peripheral ones are more cubical in nature. As we see the blood supply of the retina, 
Central retinal artery has a luminal diameter of around 0.2 mm. It is a first branch of ophthalmic artery. It enters the inferior medial side of optic nerve about 12 millimeter posterior to the globe. Extend forward to optic disc and it bifurcates in superior and inferior papillary branches. As, as I have already told, it supplies the inner two third of retina and this occlusion causes a CRAO. You can see this in picture. So, uh, super um, um, if you talk about the capillaries, uh, capillaries that are bifurcating from the arterioles, so we see mostly the nerve fiber layers, which is a superficial network, is mostly get involved in a hypertensive retinopathy. And intraretinal network, which is at the level of inner nuclear layer, mostly gets encountered in the di um, diabetic mellitus. The arterioles usually have a capillary free zone area surrounding them. Retinal, central retinal veins usually follow the course of the central retinal artery. These are formed by the union of superior and inferior retinal veins in the lamina cribrosa. If we see its course in the optic nerve, it lies lateral to the artery and exits from the optic nerve about 12 mm behind the globe. The point of clinical relevance over here is in case of a raised intracranial pressure, the central retinal vein might get compressed and it um, gives a clinical picture of papillary edema. You can see in this lowermost picture. But you have to wrap up soon. Okay, ma'am. And uh, um, the central retinal vein, find, mo most of the time, it enters as uh, for uh, drains into a cap cavernous sinus or a superior ophthalmic vein. And in the rare cases, it also drains into an inferior ophthalmic vein. If you see the branches, communicating branches with the superior ophthalmic vein and posterior central vein of Hund passes backward in the center of the optic nerve. And this picture is showing the BRVO. As we know, these are the, these, these, uh, these are the zones. The vessels are bound together with a common adventitial sheath. So it usually affects a sector of a zone in BRVO. Thank you, ma'am.